You're cruising along in a workout, feeling great, when all of a sudden, pop, you feel a grisly pop in your calf and you're reduced to a hobble. Or maybe it doesn't come all in at once. You wake up one day and head out for your morning run and feel a slight tightness in your calf. Instead of loosening up as you continue to run, it just gets a little worse. In either case, you've got a calf strain, chronic or acute damage to the muscle fibers that make up the calf muscles. In this video, we're gonna look at the science behind what happens when you strain your calf, the research on why it happens, and give you a step-by-step three-week plan to get healthy and prevent calf strains from happening again. What is a calf strain? In medical circles, the calf muscles are referred to collectively as the triceps sarai because there are three of them. Two of the three are the medial and lateral heads of the gressor synemius, which is the muscle that most people think of when they hear the term calf strain. But the calf muscles also include the soleus, which is a shorter, more slender muscle that connects to the Achilles tendon and runs lower and deeper than the two head of the gastrocnemius. A calf strain can consist of an injury to any one of these three muscle units. Gastrocnemius strains are fairly easy to identify. You'll feel pain, soreness, and tightness deep within the muscle along the back of your lower leg. Doing a classic calf stretch will often provoke pain and as will doing calf raises or vertical hops. Depending on the severity of the strain, you may or may not have pain while walking. Soleus strains are a little bit more difficult to diagnose because they can sometimes masquerade as Achilles tendon problems if they occur low enough along the calf muscle. Like a gastrocnemia strain, you'll have soreness, tightness, and pain in the soleus muscle itself. Soleus strains can be distinguished from gastrocnemia strains by comparing the pain elicited from a traditional straight leg calf stretch to the pain from a bent knee calf stretch. Here's a video demonstrating how to perform both. Toes as high as you can go. Slowly lower yourself down to beyond the step where your heel comes lower than the bottom of the step. Use your other foot to bring yourself back up and it repeat. Since the gastrocnemius muscle crosses the knee joint, but the soleus does not, a gastroc strain will not be as painful with the knee bent, while a soleus strain will often be more painful. With any type of calf strain, you might be able to feel an area of muscle tissue that is especially tight or tender, either by palpitating it with your fingers or rolling on a stiff foam roller or PVC pipe. According to J. Brian Dixon at the Marquette Sports Medicine Institute, the gastrocnemius is more prone to injury for two reasons. First, it crosses two joints, the ankle and the knee, and second is a higher proportion of fast twitch type muscle fibers. Both of these mean that there's an increased mechanical load on the muscle, predisposing it to injury. In contrast, the soleus only crosses one joint and has more slow, slow twitch muscle fibers. Dixon also noticed that 17% of calf injuries involve strains to both the gastrocnemius and the soleus. If you're having trouble isolating your calf injury to one specific muscle, this might be why. While it's fairly easy to diagnose a calf strain without any advanced medical testing, an MRI is sometimes warranted if a doctor wants more information on the exact location or the severity of the injury. This is usually used in severe strains and frank tears to the muscles. Risk factors for calf strains in runners. A 2001 study on muscle strains in Australian football players identified that some useful predictors of calf strains in athletes. First, among those with a history of previous injury to the same location, some people seem to be prone to calf strains, and a recent or historical calf strain is by far the best predictor of this. There are likely biomechanical roots to recurrent calf strains, whether they're gait-related or anatomical reasons. Some people rely more on their calf muscles to generate power or have a muscular structure that is less able to handle high loads. Another risk factor for calf strains was age. Older footballers had a higher incident of calf strains, but not strains to other muscles. This mirrors anecdotal data from runners. Masters runners seem to suffer calf strains much more frequently than their younger competitors. One study by researchers in Sydney, Australia, suggests there's a connection between lower back problems and calf injuries. In their paper, they demonstrate that injuries at the L5-S1 level are increasingly common as Australian football players get older, and they hypothesized that the nerve compression at the spinal joint could explain why calf strains, but not some other type of muscle strains, are also more common as players get older. While this has not been yet validated in independent studies, it is nevertheless an interesting avenue for explaining why calf strains occur more often in older athletes. Mainstream treatments for calf strains. Once you have suffered a calf strain, you should treat it with two strategies. 
First, reduce stress on the calf to allow it to heal. And second, work to strengthen the calf muscle that it's so that it's more resilient to stress in the future. Obviously, your initial priority is to reduce stress and allow healing. While later on in the recovery process, your focus should switch to rehabilitating and increasing the resilience of the injured muscle. When it comes to reducing stress on the calf, you probably already know what I'm about to say. Stop running, cross train for a while, and if you do run, avoid high speeds, steep hills, and shoes with an aggressive heel-to-toe drop. One less obvious way to reduce stress on your calf is to evaluate whether there are any deficiencies in your gait or muscular strength that are increasing stress on your calf muscles when you run. Since the calves help propel you off the ground, some simple biomechanical analysis predicts that if you have a deficiency in your glute muscles, the other main muscle that propels you off the ground, you might need to rely more on the calves for forward propulsion. As such, strengthening your hip muscles should be a priority. This is especially useful since hip strength work can be done very early in the rehab process while your calf is still too tender to do any calf specific strength work. A standard hip strength routine that includes glute bridges, clamshell raises, and the monster walk using a TheraBand should do the trick. I've included a link to a full rehab video in the description of this video, so go ahead and check it out below. Improving the resilience of the calf muscles is a little bit trickier. You'll want to develop a comprehensive rehab program for the calf muscles, which starts with simple, low load exercises and progresses over time to heavier, more complex exercises. Our rehab program today will include four exercises. Straight leg eccentric heel drops, bent leg eccentric heel drops, calf raises, and calf balancing drills. Once you have no pain at all in your calf when you're walking, you can start this rehab program. Three to four days per week, perform 10 to 12 repetitions of each exercise. In the case of balance, calf balance drills, hold for 10 to 12 seconds. In week two, perform the same exercises, but perform two sets of each exercise. Run through the program once, rest two to five minutes, and then repeat. In the third week, do the same two sets, but this time add weight by either holding a dumbbell or wearing a backpack with some weight in it. You don't have to load it up really heavy. Just start with something like 10 to 15 pounds and see how you feel. In the fourth week, increase the weight slightly. If you've had chronic calf strains, maintain this routine along with the hip strengthening throughout your training. I'll include a link to the description for all of these exercises below. Secondary treatments. Calf strains have a nasty habit of becoming chronic injuries. Some medical professionals suspect that this is because the calf strains create scar tissue or muscular adhesions which can predispose the area to being injured again or prevent healing in the first place. Though there's no solid scientific research to support this, many runners report success with therapies focused on breaking down scar tissue or these adhesions. This can be as simple as rolling on a foam roller, Though, given the size and toughness of the calf muscles, you might find a three inch section of PVC pipe to work a little bit better. Set a timer and roll for a full two minutes, starting at the bottom of the calf muscles and gradually kneading your way to the top, then rolling back down to the bottom in one smooth motion before repeating. Some runners find that the stick or the tiger tail rolling products are helpful too. More aggressive therapies like active release technique and grassing technique hasn't been demonstrated in a lot of research, but they may be worth a shot if you continue to have calf trouble. These manual therapies seem to help runners with chronic recurrent soft tissue injuries, including calf strains. For support, you might also find compression socks or a calf sleeve to be useful. Be sure to measure your calf and ankle circumference so you can get the correct size. Time off and return to running. Unlike stress fractures or tendon injuries, where there are fairly well-researched and understood protocols for how long you should take off and how quickly you can turn to running, there's a lot more variability with calf strains. You may only need a few days off if you're young and have a mild overuse strain, but an acute or severe strain in an older runner could require several weeks off from running. Ultimately, pain will have to be your guideline. You're bound to have an initial period where your calf is stiff and painful. This is when you should definitely avoid running. Hit the pool or get on a bike so long as it doesn't aggravate your calf. Once the initial aggravation has calmed down, you can start heating and foam rolling the area a few times a day to loosen up any tight muscle tissue. This is also when you should start doing strength exercises to rehabilitate the muscle. Once walking around feels okay for a day or two, you can give running a shot. Be aware that you'll have to ease back into things and you should avoid faster running, low heeled shoes, and steep uphills for a while. The general rule of thumb is that if the injury gets worse as you run or feels worse the next day, you need more time off. Oppositely, if the injury gets better as you run and feels better or as good the next day, it's safe to resume building your running slowly. 
If it's taking longer than expected for your calf to heal, consider seeing a physical therapist to identify any biomechanical faults or an art or grassing technique practitioner to loosen up any scar tissue or muscular adhesions that might be causing continued pain. As someone who struggled with a lot of calf injuries myself, I can attest that this rehab program works when applied and if you give the calf time to heal. Remember, if you continue to run on a calf strain, it'll just get worse and take longer to heal. I hope this rehab program and this video helps you. Sorry to hear that you have a calf strain, but if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and we'll do our best to help you out. Thanks again for watching this video and we'll see you later.